Hello and welcome to the Aware Show presents Rising Stars. That is you. That is someone who has an incredible journey, a story to tell that wants to pay it forward and heal themselves, heal others, and dive right into the purpose of helping other people with your story. And joining me today to talk about tools for healing is Cynthia Schwartzberg. Now, this is this particular show and conversation is for anyone going through any type of transition. This could be grief, which is a transition, job transition, a relationship transition, any type of trauma that's going from one stage to another stage. And Cynthia Schwartzberger, for maybe 40 years, has helped people with an integration of tools that she has assembled and put together that are really a pathway for healing. She is a brain spotting trainer, consultant, and a practitioner, and she is the creator and owner of Synthesis, which is exactly what I've been talking about, an integration of transformational modalities to help people like you heal. Welcome, Cynthia. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Lisa. It's really an honor and a blessing. So I appreciate it. Absolutely. I've worked with you for a long time, and I would love to know if if people could know a little bit about your story, like your origin story. How did you even get into it's like, like you wake up and say, I'm going to put together all these tools, modalities, and help people for 40 years? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how did you create this? Um, well, that's a really great question. Um you know, because on some level, I think that we do have like a little calling that calls us to certain things in life. Yeah. And um, so mine started in two, way, two ways. One is that I always felt there was more to life. So just as a young kid, I would be very curious about life. I would be curious about how things got put together in the world. And um, so I just felt that there was more to life. And I wondered what that more was. And then when I was, I guess, in about seventh, eighth grade and my parents were getting divorced, we went to a therapist who was going to help us. And I walked out of that office and I was like, I want to help people like she helped me because I really felt heard and understood. Oh, what a great experience. It yeah. it was a great experience, you know, it and turned something difficult into something good. Right. Yeah. And then I went and told my friends. And of course, people started telling me their stories. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, you know, junior high. Exactly. But it's it helped inspire you. And maybe, as you said, maybe we come in with this spark. We don't know, but it matches an experience. And then we carry this path into the world that turned into something that, well, how did you ever answer that question? Is there more to life? Um, I think life is what's more to life is yeah. what I've discovered, yeah. you know, and um, it, because I've also discovered that life is everything's connected. Like we are connected. Everything is connected. Life is connected. It's just one is in a way. Yes, absolutely. And so what in your path led you to something like various techniques that you now, you know, have pulled together like core energetics and so forth. What started you on this path? Right. So many times I feel like it's our pain that um, and wanting to be relieved from pain will get us started. So for myself, when I was in college, when I hit like sophomore year and I'd hang up the phone with my dad and I'd be crying and my friend handed me these spiritual teachings from this organization called The Pathwork and they just called to me. You know, it was like in 10 pages could be like a lifetime of learning. Wow. So I started that journey of um, unpacking my pain. And then, you know, as we heal, we get to sometimes a point, like especially because I had that seed planted way back that I, you know, I have that calling to like get, study and to give. Mm. So... Um, I and so you have, I mean, you really have done that. You've been studying, giving, and you just kept following the pathway, following the pathway, which is 
why I think tools for healing is something that you were probably, you did come in here to have a spark. You put together pathway, you put together core energetics. What other types of modalities were you drawn towards? So there is that professional part and a spiritual part. So on the spiritual side, I learned like Reiki and this thing called Marielle healing, like releasing from Mm -hmm. the body. So in core energetics, which I started very young, it's mind, body, spirit, and will. And so I really felt that we needed to release pain and fear from the body. So that that was one big guide through those modalities and then studying more conceptually through the pathwork. And then I felt like it was time to go back to school when I got my degree. So that's when I opened up more to um, EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization reprocessing. And through that got led to studying with Dr. David Grant, who developed brain spotting and just putting all these tools and together internally for myself and along the way, parts work, visualization and other more and more modalities going to Brazil, studying with a shaman, all of it um, informed me and helped to heal me. And so, and on the professional side, I mean, 40 years as a therapist has helped you with the clinical experience of yeah. people. Right. And just learning to sit with people and be with people and really trust people's body is innate wisdom to heal itself. Mm. And that when we get out of the way, it's like a clinician or a um a coach or anybody in the helping profession, if you really sit and hear and listen to the person in front of you, because everybody's unique and everybody's different. um, That's like half the giving. I one time, I have to tell you this story. I had a stomach ache and it was really bad. So my doctor was out of town. So I call one doctor and it's like, he's ready to put me into the hospital. I call another. Yeah. Like he was mad at me that I didn't go for a pre-op like right away. And this is a top notch hospital in New York. Then I go to this other doctor and he says, you have a virus and you should take this antibiotic. (laughs) My doctor comes back and he goes, you probably had the virus, but let me give you a hug. (laughs) After every visit, he would give me a hug. Oh my goodness. He's such a loving man. And I think that's what healed. <laughs> that's interesting. I mean, you know, it's it's so that's I love that you tell that story because it brings in the humanity aspect of healing. Yes, yeah. you can study and you can get your licenses and you can practice for 40 years and find all these great techniques. But if you don't bring in you, just the essence of you, the imprint of who you are, you are really the joy. I mean, what I've learned about you and seen and witnessed over the last couple of years that we've worked together is your wonderful, loving personality and real true desire to help. You really, truly, and you love what you do. You're not burnt out by your career and too many hours doing this. I mean, you just keep going. (laughs) And then you want to (laughs) cruise, which is great which is wonderful because you're fueled by helping people. And so what are the types of people that, you know, when they come to you, what is the main complaint that you're hearing these days? You know, I had a conversation with somebody and they said to me, I think a lot of people are in therapy because they're working on the people that should be in therapy. (laughs) That was their person. But I've been sitting with a lot of um, more women who are in relationships, not being able to have a voice. Oh, yes. yes. And um, there, there's a space that I heard day, like day after day, just this week of like waiting, waiting for something, waiting for that permission, waiting for um, it to be okay for me to be who I am. Mm. versus these are powerful, wonderful women. Right. Right. And um, I just found like that's, huh. Oh, it's the best. It's the best thing that you could help people with right now. It's the same thing that I found in my coaching practices. 
women having a voice and opinion, knowing that they matter when they speak up, not being afraid to be heard and to speak truth. So that usually stems from a certain level of trauma, right? So how would you address somebody who comes to you with a, like a childhood wound of um, not being heard as a child or their voice being told their voice does not matter? Right. I would sit and really hear what they're saying about that because I don't want to go try to figure out what it was that that happened to you then if it's not really present in the moment. So I find it's really important to work with what's in the here and now. And I really learned a lot about this in like through the way we enter working with trauma in brain spotting. So yes, I want to hear, but by asking and asking the questions sort of like, just tell me a little bit more about that. Um, is, does that feel like something that's happened often for you? So sometimes I like listen and to look, listen for patterns or like when you think about yourself that way, what do you feel inside? Like, how does that sit with you? Um, how has that impacted your life? Getting curious with people mm. through that, you're going to find a nugget of something that you can then probably do some more experiential kind of therapy with to um, what help. is brain spotting? You mentioned brain spotting. What is that? It's a modality of healing and working with people that has been humongously effective in, in my experience. How does it and work? It works on the basis of being able to get to the part of our brain like that emotional brain, the physiology that talking and understanding won't be able to help us reset and re-regulate to feel more peace and calm. Mm. And then is there a an brain spotting? Is there an eye technique that you could maybe explain to us? Yeah. So I think I told you um, once before, so you're referencing the, there's the motto that says, where I look affects how I feel. Because when I am looking in a certain direction, I can get access to information. Did you ever notice like kids in school and they're staring out the window and you think that they're daydreaming? Well, maybe that's helping them focus. Huh. It's not always. Or maybe it's helping them just like ground so that they can take in and retain. Mm. So it's not impolite to not look at somebody it might be the way that you can think of something get access to more than just words or to more than just being polite or to more than just what you think the other person wants to hear and so i wonder if you could give us an example of that or maybe we could experience it because so cynthia has a wonderful book called the curious voyage i have it back here and it's a combination of these tools that you have then created into something called um, harmonic brain healing. So maybe you could give us an experience because my main goal is to, to let everyone know what you do and the brilliance that you are. And your life experience has been so detailed and exclusive to you to pull these tools together. So say for example, I have, um, I have an experience where, um, like I just recently had an accident and I, a bike crash oh. and I have this fear anytime anyone stops in front of me short on a bike that I freak, I go into a visceral freak out full level 10 and I, it's not normal. It's not, <laughs> I shouldn't, I should just put my hands on the brakes and move, but my body lights up. So where would I utilize this, the harmonic brain healing in order to start to diffuse that feeling, that feeling in my body, that trauma in my body? Well, we would have to do a process called this, like to set up a little bit, like the harmonic brain healing has a couple of different components to it, but it's like taking in a situation like that and finding an eye position that helps you feel as grounded as possible when you're thinking about that freezing up frozen moment and then from there 
I would not have you stay looking at that spot because that's just a lot to like stare and, and you don't want to keep repeating it. But we would think about a preferred way of you being with that um, moment in time when a, you said a bike is going by or you're driving. When and stopping you, in front of me. Okay. When a car, when a bike is stopping in front of you, are you in a bike? Are you on yes. a bike or you're in a car? On a bike. Oh, so well, even in a car, if it's anywhere where someone stops short in front of me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how would you prefer to be in that moment? Okay. I got to breathe first and realize present time, present wait, time. You want time. me to wait, like literally do this right now with you? I would love it. I would love it. <laughs> yes, oh. I would give people an example of what, yes, honestly, okay. I really do need to work on this. Yes. Okay. So let me just get my trusty little... Great. Thank you. <laughs> we can edit what we need and figure this out from there. Great, great, great. Um, so thank you everybody for wanting to support and to help Lisa. Um, so just a holding a space for Lisa to receive what she needs to. So it's my great honor to give this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So when you think about that moment that you kind of freeze, you, when somebody's stopping short in front of you, zero to 10, how activated does that feel? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that's like a nine. That's like up there. That, that's like terrifying level. Okay. So we're going to first start, a, find us eye position that's called the beginning spot. And we're just going to, when you think about that nine, just kind of scan your body and tell me, is there any place in your body that feels less than a nine? Mm. My neck. Yeah, it's like, here that's the nine yes so okay, what so anywhere that feels nine, less than the nine nine like a you know 8.5 a, a six a, what whatever is less than nine mm, wow it's such a whole body thing um my hands okay great your hands so what i wanted to is i first want to help you find an eye position that connects to your hands okay okay so we're looking for helping you feel most connected to your hands because that's a little bit more grounded than your neck. Yes, yes. So is this at eye level? Yes. So notice um, if 10 is I totally feel my hands, how strong do you feel them when you look here? Okay, uh, maybe an uh, eight. Okay. And then if you look in your center? Hmm, six. And if you look over It's like a seven. Okay. So the six is, uh, the eight was over here. Yes. Mm -hmm. So where do you feel it the most? Your yes. hands. Yes. So just help, help me just fine tune it. Should I come in a little bit or stay out? Uh, in a little bit. Okay, tell me where. That's good, right there. And should I go up? No. Go down? Yes, that, that works right there. Yes. Right okay. So now don't look at this. Okay. Mark this spot and we're going to come back to it. Okay. 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 So that's my safe spot right there. Yeah. For um, It's not really safe because <laughs> but like this, it, we're, we're going to call it the beginning spot. So think about like, I originally called this movie spotting because it's sort of like this movie that plays in our head right. over, over again. And this is going to be a way to help stop it going on automatic replay. Okay. So that it can move, go, move. Okay? okay. So when you think about, um, so now just look around in, either in your environment or my environment where you something is pretty and nice to look at and helps you relax. Or maybe oh, I love your flowers. They're so pretty. Yes, okay. they're beautiful. So just look at my flowers and those yes. are going to be, we're going to call that the beautiful spot. Okay. Okay. So how would you rather be when in your body and in your thoughts when you see a bike stop short? Calm, in present time, more relaxed, all of those things. Like my kitty right here. Yeah. <laughs> I just jumped into them. <laughs> They love this break. They this is they love this work. So he really what, wants to help. Thank you, Kitty. <laughs> and they'll use your kitty however you need to when we're working. Okay. 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 
So um, when we're going to go back to that first spot, I think it was about here. Yes. Yes. So let me just, I'm going to anchor this a little bit more on my okay. okay. So don't look at this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to have you look at my flowers. And when I say, when you're ready, you're going to go to the point. I'm going to count to, I'm going to say, go to the beginning. So in that, you're going to first see yourself like in the car or on a bike and like that, that moment in time. I'm going to count to five. When I get to five, if you're going to do, you know how to edit movies. It's like you're going to edit a new ending. So you're going to just sort of pull down or like iMovie, like cut and paste in you being in your car and being calm. Okay. Okay. Right? Okay. And um, and then you're going to go to the flowers. And and if you need to do this at the flowers instead, that's okay. Either place or you, you may find a third spot, whichever you need to do is fine. Okay. And then you're going to be with that and I'll check in with you. Okay. okay. All right. Let's do it. Okay. So go to the beginning spot like the pointer mm -hmm. one two three four five go to your preferred ending come off the spot go to the flowers take a big deep breath and blow it out ah. okay i like this this is great so this is basically creating all right let's do it again let me do it again wait it's Just mapping over a good experience. Right. But we're going to do a little bit more than that. We're going to help move this. So okay. just hang out at the flowers for a moment. Okay. And notice what's happening in your body and what, what comes to mind. Present time. I see myself on a bike stopping easily. I see that it's easy to use my brakes, that it's not a freak out moment, that everyone is stopping at the nice slow pace. It's easy. It's happening. Yes. Yes. And where do you notice that it's easy in your body? My chest, in my chest. And also my mind is saying, look, that happened once, but every other time it's been okay. It's been okay. Right. So bring that awareness. That happened once, but every other time it's been okay. It's been okay. I want you to bring that awareness now to the pointer. Okay. One, two, three, four. Five, go to your preferred ending, come off the spot, go back to the flowers, take a big deep breath and blow it out. And just let yourself kind of hang out and gaze at the flowers and just notice organically what comes to mind or what comes up in your body. This is, this is easy. I've done this a million times before. Everyone stops. It's okay. I can anticipate when people stop. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. Yes. Okay. So bring that thought, I am safe. I am safe to the pointer. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Go to your preferred ending. Come off the spot. Look at the flowers. Take a deep breath and blow it out. Wow, that's really, actually really beautiful. That's what comes to my mind. That's so beautiful. I don't know why, it's just beautiful. That really makes me feel present. I, uh, You know what? I love writing. I love the feeling. I love the hair and the wind in the face. And it's the beauty around me. I do love that. I really, really love that. I love being out in nature and with the sky and the clouds. Yeah. Okay. Bring that, that love of nature and being out in this. Yes. This cloud. Bring that to the pointer now. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. Go to your preferred ending and let it go wherever it needs to go. Then go back to the flowers. Take a big deep breath and blow it out. Wow. That it, I mean, I feel great. I mean, I feel I'm connected again to why I wrote in the first place. It's to feel strong. It's to feel my heart rate. It's to get my metabolism and mitochondria flowing and 
be in nature and it's dopamine and it's all sorts of good things. It's all sorts of good things. And it's a really good thing you had that bright, bright flower next to you because it helped a lot. I could look at little man over here. Oh, do you, I want to j just check in for a moment. Notice what you're feeling in your neck now. Oh. And when you think about being in the car and the bike stopping in front of you, how activated does it feel now? There's nowhere near the charge. It's like a two. Okay. So it's we're just gonna, an awareness. If you want, we can go to take that two to the pointer. Whatever okay. that is, whatever it means, go to the pointer with the two. One, two, three, four, five. Go to your preferred ending, come off the spot, go back to the red flower, whichever one you want. Take a deep breath and blow it out. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I see everybody stopping. I see the flow of everything happening. I haven't been able to ride behind people since this happened six months ago. So I have I have a feeling now where it's okay. I can reintegrate safely. Right. Safely. So bring I'm, that. I can reintegrate safely. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. Just bring that one more time to the pointer. One, two, three, four, five. Go to your preferred ending or wherever it's going now. Take a deep breath and blow it out. And you can go back to the flowers. Yeah. 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 I feel safe. That's what I keeps coming through. Every I feel safe. Everything, everything's flowing. I feel safe. Everyone's stopping. I feel safe. That's what I need to feel here in order to get back out there. Okay. And do you feel it here? Yes, I do. So where do you feel complete? Like should I, I, I do? I do. I do. Okay. I do. My goodness. That is amazing. And that was like, I don't even know, five minutes where you just remapped my brain with this great image that came through and looking at something pleasant, which I absolutely have a, a love flowers. I really do. And then of course I've got my kitty. So this is good. <laughs> This is wonderful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And that was under five minutes. And so, oh, really? I don't even know. I mean, it was somewhere around there. I just am grateful for that experience. And anyone listening can understand that this is easy. It's possible. You outline all of this in your book in um, The Curious Voyage. Can you tell us a little bit about what the book is. And I mean, if you could explain a little bit about The Curious Voyage, why'd you call it that? Um, well, because I think to keep an open mind as we explore ourselves, the word curious is a great um, use of the word. And also, you know, we are all captains of our own ship in life. So we're on this voyage so the voyage and to be curious and to, you know, navigate our way through the waters, like the highs and the lows of life. Um, so it just felt like the right verbiage. And then um, to authenticity, because it's really like looking at all those ways that I'm supposed to be, that I have to be. And what are my priorities? What are my values? What have I been brought up with? And how can I unpack that to find my soul, my heart, my authentic self, um, the place that I live in that's most grounded and present with who I am? And, and so I when somebody reads the book, it's like a voyage of these various healing modalities that they can practice just like you and I did because they're relatively short, right? Yeah, so the what you and I did can't really be happening in the book, right? right? But I do share stories of um, people that I helped, especially like with brain spotting or, um, and then the mixture of all the different modalities. So there's exercises that after each chapter and then in the appendix, there's a, they're kind of packed up nicely for people mm -hmm. to be able to apply it to themselves or like for therapists, you can use this and work with 
clients or coaches or people in the helping profession. So if, or even, you know, ministers or rabbis or, you know, like people, the clergy. Ah, so you help with, there's basically three different branches that you help with. One is training professionals, right? Yes. Okay. And the other one is individuals training, helping individuals like me and help, you know, with our issues. And what is the third branch? So um, I also start to, starting to do more mentoring and helping people because I believe, and I, you know, kind of from my own story, I shared that as I work on myself, I can be a stronger presence to help others. Mm, so nice. it's mentoring people to do their work, to also clear out that um, over empathy, like a lot of people burn out because they've learn to be empathic and then they've like not been able to clear and cleanse mm -hmm. you know what is mine and what is not mine mm. mine to keep what is mine to explore what did what got triggered that I really need to attend to for my own journey you know so we as caregivers take on a lot of stuff and yes. we get lost sometimes in the way yes. so it's really mentoring people through that um lost, burnout, overwhelm, and um, differentiating. Mm -hmm. so Learning to really co-regulate with clients. Is the majority of what you do working with other healthcare professionals? At this point, it is, yes. Um, I work with a lot of like big-hearted business people, leaders, um, other professionals, or very powerful um, people in their own lives. Um, I've been doing therapy for a really long time, but I have a real desire to teach and to pass on. And, you know, part of that is the maturation of the evolution of life. Yes, yes, to mentor. But to, I mean, synthesis is something that you created. This is the combination of all of these different transformational tools. And for you to then pay it forward and help other people learn your techniques is a, a wonderful way of carrying on your legacy, carrying on the work that you've spent 40 years cultivating. And at the same time, you are still working with people. And and so you created a mentoring program and all of that can be found at synthesis.com, which I love. It's, it's C-Y-N-T-H-A-S-I-S, -S, her name, Cynthia, synthesis.com. And you can also find The Curious Voyage there, the book there, and find out a lot about various healing modalities that Cynthia has put together. So I just want to ask you for just one final thing. Where do you see our world if people really adapt to these modalities? How do you see a world where people are truly working on their own healing? Um, I see that there's more patience more acceptance, more grace of giving each other some space, like whether we're like um, driving in a car and somebody cuts us off or if we're like at the grocery store, like out in the world, there's a certain kindness that um, provides humans to be able to excel and to create and to create a life that adds growth and meaning because we have that urgency to create and to um, give. And um, it's part of human nature. Yes, I would love a world like that too. And it's really interesting that through your own pain, you discovered something that healing that helped you that was actually greater than your own pain. And when you, I mean, just tell me a little bit about that experience. When you started actually helping other people heal their pain, how did that help you? Um, you know, in the beginning as a therapist, it's sort of like one step forward, two steps back. So sometimes if I hear two or more, tw two or more times in a day or a week, um, a book that my clients are reading or people are struggling or I'm seeing things a certain way. That guided me back to my own journey to do more healing. I love so, that. Um, I think that we grow together. And then what happened sometimes was I would be 
studying something, people who had, you know, came, they, they healed. And then they, when they come, they can't come back to me. They're ready for what I just learned. Ah, yes. Because you're growing as well. Yes. Right. So as we grow, we have more to give. And as therapists, because we're in these wonderful relationships with people, people got better, but then they, they'll often seek you out or sometimes they just write you really great letters. Like we did a great visualization and now I'm living it, you know, like stuff. Like yes. That. Yes, you did. You shared with me a really great visualization about the prayer hands that I shared with my daughter. That was really cool. Um, do you, do you mind sharing that? Because I thought that was really neat. It brings you back to yourself. Yeah. So I was sharing with Lisa that, um, in, and I speak about this in the book that sometimes like if this is my me and sometimes I, we want to go out into the world and we want to do the right thing and we want to get approval and we're really trying and I'm trying hard and I'm really trying too hard. And if only I do this, I know that's going to make them feel better. And if you look at the space between my hands, I say, that's your anxiety because you've come so far away from yourself. What would happen? Just watch my hands. If you slowly come back to you. And that's the gift of the curious voyage is to really find that journey back home to ourselves, which is, to, uh, you know, a much more, like home to our soul. I, I love that because so your hands started off in a prayer pose. And as you get more and more disconnected with the anxieties of life, your hands get separated more. And as you start to address those anxieties and give them a voice and a, acknowledge them, your hands slowly come back to yourself. And I did that with my daughter and it was great because she said, oh, you know what? I really needed to do this. I need to write this out. I need to journal this. I want to have this heard. And then she was like, thank you so much, mom. And then she just went up, hung up and started journaling. And I thought, wow, that was great. That was such a simple technique that anyone can use. And we have so many people dealing with anxiety and stress and, and in our world, and especially our, you know, our young 20 somethings that we just need a tool to remind us to get back to ourselves. Yes. That's a great example of what synthesis is. It's a, it's a synthesis of all of combining all of these tools. And it's um, again, I appreciate it. Now I started off this whole entire interview talking about how we have experience transitions and this could be any type of loss or grief or job loss or anything like that and synthesis is basically a pathway to help with those transitions do you have anything that you want to just say about that to wrap it up um that i want to say trust your desire and trust your calling and let that be your guide and, you know, like that old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Trust the little inklings and the um, inquiries that come at you and get curious about them. Absolutely. The curious joy voyage. All right. Well, thank you so much, Cynthia. Again, her website is synthesis.com. I love your heart. I love your soul. And it's been such a joy working with you. And thank you for being a rising star. <laughs> All right. Take care. Until next time, anybody who wants to be a rising star, please join us. All right. I'm Lisa Gar. Take care. Bye.